Hey, what's up everyone? I wanted to share my weekend pickups. Uh, this is my first ever video. You can let me know if it should be my last ever video. Uh, anyway, I think this is some of the coolest Atari stuff I've ever found, purchased, uh, if not the coolest. Anyway, uh, my wife ended up uh, coming with me on Saturday trip. We drove about 500 miles, mainly to make a purchase from uh, just one guy. I decided to go ahead and work in a stop at the Digital Press video game shop in Clifton, New Jersey. I have always wanted to stop there, and uh, it was pretty cool. I'm glad I went, and it wasn't too much further out of our way. So, initially, uh, I was just going to have this guy ship me some stuff. But uh, then we started introducing a few heavier, expensive things into the mix, and I thought uh, road trip is going to be the better option here. I just didn't want to risk and pay for the cost of shipping. Anyway, haven't decided whether I'm keeping all of this, going to trade some, might sell some, I don't know. Right now I'm just excited to have all this stuff. So here we go, here, here's what I made the trip for. First off, we have a copy of iMagic Game, Laser Gates. Beautiful copy, really cool game. Uh, comes with, let's see, comes with a nice copy of the manual, okay. Uh, let's go on to Star Voyager. Now, this is a game I already have, and I fact, in fact I have the, uh, the picture label version. So why do I want this one? Well, I mean, I like all Atari stuff, but this one is special. It came with this. Now these are the rough draft, uh, sort of pre-release instructions for it from iMagic. You can probably see it says, illustration, pick up cover of package here. So whether they just didn't have uh, have this finished in time uh, for, for, you know, getting it out for review, or, you know, this is, this is probably common, you know, just sending out the, the rough draft uh, version to reviewers. Um, you know, maybe they hadn't decided on the artwork yet. Anyway, uh, it's real cool, and it's mostly like the retail manual. There are a couple, I think, differences inside. I'm not sure this story bit on the front fully made it into the final release. Uh, but yeah, that was you know super cool. I didn't have anything like that in my collection. And uh, so, okay, that's, that's part one of, of what made this trip amazing. Here we have Trick Shot. And again, beautiful condition, text label, and this is the same story. We have the iMagic printed, let's see how big it is, uh, printed text, and the front says illustration, front of package beauty shot. So again, leads me to believe, you know, they didn't have the, the packaging all sorted out yet. Um, and same deal with this one. I think this one's even closer to the final release manual. Um, but yeah, like I said, just, you know, I didn't have anything like this in my collection. So, you know, these were two uh, great pickups to start out with. So there's one more neat thing about these review copies. Uh, let's go ahead and bring back laser gates for a second. So you can see it looks like, you know, any, any iMagic cart that you're used to. Uh, it's got that nice textured surface. Well, if we look at the other two, they are smooth. And I have never seen iMagic carts like that before. Uh, whether they just didn't have the uh, mold finished for the textured version or what, I don't know, but uh, but yeah, again, I, I had never seen anything like this, and, and yeah, that was really neat to pick up. Okay, let's move on. Here's another cart. Uh, it's Gangster Alley by Spectravision. Uh, this is one of Spectravision's first games. It might be the first game, actually. If you look, uh, I think you can maybe see the product number in the dead center there. It says SA201. Uh, so, right, I think this was maybe the first one that they came out with. Anyway, uh, looks like a regular copy. It's not. It's actually another review copy. Uh, the main difference is the end label, which does not say uh, Gangster Alley. It says Spectravision, and it has the, uh, the product number on both sides here. And, uh, and yeah, apart from that, no real difference between the regular retail release and this one. Uh, that I'm aware of. I tried it. There's no difference. 
but uh, but yeah, just yet another cool little variant uh, to add to my collection. Now, uh, Gangster Alley also came with a manual, and uh, it is 99% the same as the regular release. The only big difference I found is on the back, uh, the copyright line is 1982 Spectra Video Incorporated, uh, whereas the regular release says Audiovisual by Spectra Vision International Limited. It's also a mistake, or uh, maybe they just didn't decide on the product number yet. Uh, but this says SA202, uh, whereas the card says SA201, so don't know about that. Okay, so let's switch things up for a second. We're going to look at an Atari 5200 game. We have Soccer. This is the uh, original artwork and title before they changed it to uh, Real Sports Soccer. Uh, once again, this is a case of me having both of those things already, however, so here's the, the two artworks and manuals for soccer and real sports soccer. But this cart came with photocopy of the instructions. And this one is especially neat. You open it up and there is handwritten corrections. They want to change the word skill to play. And that occurs in multiple places in here. You got a sort of pencil sketch outline of the artwork. Do we have it on this page too? No, I don't think we have it on this page as well. But in any case, there are multiple places in here. For example, this page has uh, two changes, skill to play, and when you look at the actual release version, you see that, yes, they did make the change, both places. Uh, there's one other thing about this. It says visitors read on the back. I'm not sure what they're referring to there. Uh, the manual is, of course, blue and silver like anything else. And this manual does specify inside that the visiting team wears red, so... Uh, it's definitely written in the same handwriting, but yeah, I don't know what that's for. Uh, so there's one other weird thing about that, uh, that manual. Let's take a look. The product number on the back says, right there, dead center, 5218. And in fact, the part number also does as well, uh, C018. 281-18, uh, revision 1. The soccer was released as 5213. And it says that on the card, it says that on, you know, everything. So, was it finished faster than a bunch of the other titles? I think Defender was the one that ended up being uh, 5218. But, uh, but yeah, not sure when or why that product number got changed. But, uh, yeah, just a, another really neat little quirk. All right, so we're gonna flip on back to the 2600 now, and we got a copy of Beanie Bopper. Two of the things you might notice at first are, it's a different title, and it's a different mock-up screenshot on the front there. Uh, the end label is also short. It doesn't go all the way to the end of the mold there. Uh, what's tough to see is that there was a stamp on here that says, demo only, uh, not, for, not for sale. Um, once again, we have a review copy here, uh, sort of a, a first draft from, uh, from Sirius Software. Uh, I don't have the regular card in my collection yet to show you the difference, but I'll put a picture of it up right now, and you can see the difference between the logos, the screenshots, and all that. Uh, the other neat thing about this one is that the back of the card does not have the 20th Century Fox logo uh, in, sort of embossed in the plastic yet. So yeah, uh, another neat demo copy, not for sale. Um, once again, sold, not sold. Once again, sent to a magazine for review. And uh, like I said, I had nothing like this in my collection before. So and this is all super neat to me. All right, so this, uh, this next group of things, this was initially the end of my original order. I thought I was just gonna have him ship all this stuff out. Uh, but how cool are these things? Uh, first we have 
Phaser Patrol in box, essentially new. It does not have the supercharger with it. That's all right. Uh, it's got everything else with it, and you know the box is in. Man, it must have been opened maybe once. Uh, so that's cool. Number two, Communist Mutants from Space. Same deal, just beautiful mint shape almost. Even the top flap looks like it maybe was opened once. Um, these, I guess, were review copies. Um, yeah, just really cool. There are more. Fireball, number three, same story, amazing. Number four, suicide mission, new, maybe used once. We skip five and go to six, Dragon Stomper. Beautiful shape, love it. And one of the harder ones to find, number 10, Party Mix. This is one of the few four player, uh, multi, sort of a multiplayer game for the 2600. And uh, yeah, just in beautiful condition. And you know, all of this stuff, I was prepared to go ahead and uh, let them ship on to me. But uh, the next things that I'm about to show you are why we didn't do that. I lied. There is one more supercharger thing. We have cassette only, Escape from the Mind Master. As uh, far as I know, this is exactly the same as the retail release. There was a prototype version of this found uh, when the title was Labyrinth, I believe. So that one didn't come with a box or the, the uh, cassette case or the manual. It came with review copy manual, how to play Escape from the Mind Master, Star Path Corporation, how to use the supercharger, the works. So yeah, that was gonna be the extent, full extent of my purchase. Then I find out he's got some joysticks available and they're not your run of the mill joysticks. And I kinda had to have them. So, uh, you know, shipping them all would have definitely added a lot of expense to this. Uh, so this is what really prompted the road trip. Uh, let's go ahead and start with the smallest of the bunch. This is the TG Enjoy Stick. It's very small. I don't have enormous hands, but fits in the palm of a hand. You have a fire button up here. Self-centering stick, like Vectrex or uh, the Odyssey 2, I think. Um, TG, I think, is mostly known for making Apple II sticks. Um, eventually they got into making Atari replacement sticks and you know this is one that's I think well liked it's well made well reviewed the best thing about this one is it has two tabs you push tab on each side this comes out and you can rotate this around so you can play you really can play one-handed you can use you know, middle finger on this button, thumb on here. Uh, it's an analog stick, but it uh, it converts the analog signal to digital. Um, I have not tested this one yet, but it's in beautiful shape. Uh, I think it works. See if you can see the little Enjoy Stick logo on there. Uh, yeah, so that's number one. You know, I had never seen one of these for sale anywhere. Uh, he said he hasn't seen them all that often as well. Uh, so yeah, TG Enjoy Stick. All right, here comes the next one. Uh, it's a monster. It's one of uh, the reasons where I, we really just could not do this through shipping. It is in the original box. It's the uh, GIM Electronics Fire Command 2. Uh, it weighs at least five pounds. And uh, let's take, go ahead and take a look at it. See if we can get some focus here. So, uh, this particular model, I'll take it out of plastic too. Here we go, it's beautiful. This particular model, uh, 
It's uh, it's actually not made for the Atari. It's made for the ColecoVision. Uh, both sets of fire buttons on the left and the right side, I guess, are so you can play either left or right-handed. Um, it does work with the Atari 2600. I think it's got, uh, I don't remember if this has leaf switches or micro switches inside. Uh, in any case, this thing weighs a ton. Uh, if you put it down, it's not moving, but you know, it's, a, it's a little bit stiff that might loosen up uh, over time. If we look at the back here, we have the GIM Electronics Corp logo on the back. But yeah, this is a brick of metal. Warranty still in the box. And uh, yeah, let's take a look at the box as well. Box still has the business card of the PR department that, uh, that sent it to the magazine for review. The box depicts the Atari version with one, uh, one button on each side. And it says, you know, adapts to most video games, um, which is true. Uh, this one has, oh, it's down here. You know, this is the VC 2001C. Uh, so yeah, this was made with the ColecoVision and the Atom and uh, Apple computers in mind. Um, but yeah, weighs a ton. Original box, great shape. Warranty, still in the bottom. Unbelievable. Okay, and here comes my favorite of the bunch. It's the Questar 2. These things are impossible to find. Uh, it's got a metal base, the rest of it is, is you know, plastic. Uh, but, you know, once again, it has buttons on both sides. This is just a really well-made joystick all around. Um, yeah, I can't wait to try this out with some more games. I, I tried it once, uh, works, and yeah, I may let this one go, but it would take it would take a lot. I love this thing. We'll see. Uh, I guess now's a good time to reveal uh, who I got all this stuff from. Uh, this is from David All. He's the founder, publisher, editor in chief of one of the first ever magazines focused on microcomputers. You may have heard of it. It's Creative Computing. Uh, I honestly I didn't realize who I was dealing with until far too late in this transaction. Uh, it was an honor to meet this guy and you know having having things with that kind of history attached to it, you know, knowing which uh, which magazine this was sent to for review. Uh, it's just really cool. Uh, Creative Computing also had an offshoot magazine called Arcade and Video Games. Uh, I'll, I'll come back to that in a bit. Back to games for a second. Uh, so this is everything that, what you just saw was everything that I made the trip with the intention of buying. You know how it goes. You get there, you say, can I take a look at you know some of the things you have otherwise you know that you might not have told me about? Uh, can we look through some of your boxes? So we start to go through some of the boxes and binders that he has, and the first thing that really catches my eye is this. We have a sample slash you know some people will call this a prototype. Really, a prototype is something if it's not fully finished. I would say. Uh, this is more of a, a review copy, a pre-release copy. Uh, some of these do have uh, sort of works in progress on them. Um, this one is Encounter at L5, and uh, you know it's a great paddle game. Uh, it's one of Data Age's, I think, better games. So the end label is printed. It's got the little trademark uh, on the title. No title on the front. Data Age is a sticker on top of the label. It's got the sample stamp. Uh, this is his writing, but he's got very neat writing, fortunately, so uh, that's pretty cool. And it did come, Data Age sent it with the manual, which is, as far as I know, the standard uh, retail manual. So, you know, we're continuing to go through uh, some of his binders, you know, full of cartridges, full of manuals. Everything's in immaculate shape. You know, it's been in the binders, in storage for all these years, not exposed to the elements. You know, even all the Activision carts look like new. I mean, almost everything he had would have been an upgrade to something in my collection. Uh, so we come to one of the binders, and it says, what does it say? Data age. Okay. So he cracks it open, and we have four more. Snake, bugs, warp lock, airlock. 
manuals. You know, so so look, these are not good games. Uh, and you know, for all of these, I'm I'm pretty sure that these are all final versions. Uh, there has been a a, uh, a prototype sort of work in progress, I guess, or m maybe better to say earlier build uh, of Warp Lock. And this may in fact be that earlier build, but uh, you know, the difference is not in gameplay. The difference is in uh, some code optimization, as far as I can tell. And I'm not sure if there's a way for me to find out by you know gameplay. I don't have a uh, any problem dumper or reader or anything like that. So for now, I may just not know. But you know, you should have seen my face when this binder opened, and you know, suddenly there's not one data age, uh, not one data age preview copy, but five. Uh, so take a look at this. This is volume two of Video and Arcade Games Magazine. Check out which five data age titles are reviewed. So these come from the pages of a magazine into my hands. Uh, by the way, the joysticks were also reviewed uh, in either this magazine or Creative Computing. And I can uh, put some links up to those um, so you can check them out if you want. But yeah, you know, have, having this stuff is all awesome on its own. Being able to connect it with you know a specific person, specific magazine, a specific time, you know that's even that's even better if you ask me. All right, so you know that's all pretty amazing. You ask yourself, all right, can things possibly get better from here? Yes. Uh, we start looking through some more stuff. Uh, we've got the last two things coming up here. First one we have. It's an Activision uh, prototype cartridge um, slash review, in this case, review cartridge. Uh, this one is, you know, for all intents and purposes, yeah, we can call it a prototype. Activision very rarely let out uh, legit work in progress prototypes. There have only, I think, been two found, one for Pitfall, and I can't remember what the other one is at the moment. Uh, but yeah, I tried this. It's 90, uh, let's call it 95% the same as the retail release. I think the 5% that's not is actually bit rot. Um, there's some problems with the Activision logo and how the score counter is, uh, is displayed. And you know, to, to me, that's what it looks like. I guess we're fortunate that that's the only damage that it has uh, suffered over the years. But I mean, all right, we've, we've moved on from data age to Activision and I think that's, uh, that's a step up. All right, here comes the last one, my favorite piece. I really don't see myself getting rid of this one. Uh, this is one of, I think, my 10 favorite games on the system. It's another Activision prototype. River Raid. Got the end label still attached. Uh, this is his label, because as you saw, he, store th he stored things in binders. Uh, I thought about trying to peel that label off, but then I said, you know, this is, it's part of the history. He, he put that on there and, you know, at least he's got nice handwriting and it looks fine and it doesn't get in the way of where it says Activision prototype. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to leave that alone. Uh, like Spider Fighter, you know, I played it for a while. It's not a, you know, true prototype in that sense. As far as I can tell, it's exactly the same as the final release. Uh, but wait, there's more. It came with the printed review sheet from Activision. And, uh, you know, that is the same as the final uh, manual, minus a few obvious steps like turn your console on, uh, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, that rounded out the most amazing score in, in my mind. Uh, in, in terms of history, in terms of you know, new stuff that you just, you can't add stuff like this to your collection uh, any day of the week. So, uh, so yeah, hope you enjoyed checking all this stuff out with me. And uh, hopefully I have some more videos like this to share with you in the future. See you later.